we're going to do in this video, we're going to strip down this, which is a Hope Duo Lever. Um, I believe that Hope developed this for people that had like hand injuries. So what you can do is run your front and your rear brake um, on one side of the handlebars and just use one hand for that. Um, you can actually flip it over and use it left or right and then you would just have to take the pivot out and uh, swap the levers over and do that. So what we're going to do is strip it all down. It is a separate reservoir so your front and rear brake are controlled by a completely different fluid which is probably a good thing really. Um, so yeah, let's get into stripping down this. It is based on a tech-free lever system. Yeah, so with the Hope Duo, the first thing you want to check is that the there's two little screws in here. On this one, there's actually one screw that is missing. Um, but yeah, if you want to remove this pivot, it's a lot easier if you undo these little grub screws, if you have them. So it's a two mil. See a little grub screw there, even if you just loosen it a bit, just means that that pivot isn't bolted now. So, yeah, and then after that, we can get on with top cap and then removing the rest of it. Yeah, this lever has been in use recently, so there's probably going to be a, quite a bit of fluid inside. We've got a T10 Torx as ever, and we're just going to undo both the reservoir caps. It's probably a good idea to kind of uh, just keep checking if it's leaking obviously if there's a, a rubber seal under here and a reservoir cap and that's going to be sitting at the bottom so the likelihood of that weeping a little bit of fluid is probably quite high so it's best to keep on top of that and make sure the rubber seals in good condition there's quite a bit of fluid in there and as you can see that's your standard uh, tech free lever cap there so we've got that off Turn it upside down, get rid of some of that fluid. And it's exactly the same for this side. There's a bit of fluid in there as well. Let's get some of that out. And then as you can see in there, it doesn't go through all the way. So yeah, separate reservoirs. And if you just to see that, you might just think it's a, a tech-free lever. So yeah, what we're going to do now is get rid of the pivot. And there's a little circlip at the bottom that we're going to undo. The pivot goes all the way through the whole thing. Yeah, so for this bit, there's a little circlip underneath right there. Zoom in on that. Um, and what we have is a small pair of circlip pliers as well so these are three millimeter to ten millimeter uh, circuit pliers what you want to do is just open that a little bit just enough to try and get it over because if you overstretch that you might end up snapping it you can squeeze it after with a pair of pliers and make it a little bit smaller again if you need to do that uh, one of the things with this lever now is you've got to take this whole pivot out and because it has to go through this piece of metal then there's this part of the lever blade, then there's an inner part, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of metal that has got to travel through. It can be pretty stubborn and quite difficult to remove, so you might find you need like a, a punch or something to get it moving. So what I tend to start with is something that fits into that hole there, because I don't really want to damage the end of that. Um, and you might find if you push on that, you'll be able to move it. It might be much more stubborn than that is obviously quite problematic but we're just going to go up to a bigger size which won't go through the hole but hopefully we can push that through and there we go there's your longer pivot and we're just going to hold on to the lever blades because both of those could pop off and there we go and there's both of your lever blades there that's kind of more unusual one, I guess. Try not to let them split, because then you could uh, end up losing a little brass insert in there. So it's best to keep it all together if you can. And then what we're left with is this. 
So essentially you've just got two, um, I think they call them retainer plates, and two screws in there, and you undo them and the pistons should come out. So we're going to do that. Just going to grab the little bit for that T10 security bit that you'll need. There's a little hole in the bottom, or in the middle. We're just going to grab this and take out these two bolts. I'm going to put my finger over the piston in case that shoots off. There we go. So we've undone that. I'm going to just pull the whole unit out like so with the spring and just do the same for the other side. And pull that out as a complete unit. So that's essentially everything. Taken out from there, you can't see through because the hose is still connected, but that's uh, basically the whole lever stripped down apart from taking this clamp off. Yeah, there you go. So what we're going to do now is we are going to remove uh, the pistons, seals, and we're going to put them back on just to show you how to do that. Here's the uh, piston with the seals, the spring. The spring just pulls off, it just essentially clicks onto the bottom when you put that back in. Uh, you can take your retaining plate off, leave the screw on there. What we've got is this little flat bladed tool, which is a proper like piston seal removal tool. Uh, it doesn't have any sharp edges, so hopefully we won't damage these seals because we want to put them back on as well. So we're just going to get that to that back edge and get that underneath there. Try and lever an edge up. And then we can just push that lever that over the top like so. Didn't work too well. It's actually split now. So that was a quite a weak uh, seal. I think we've got some spare ones anyway, so we'll have to put a new one on. So that probably didn't have too long a life on it anyway. So what we can actually use now is just grab a screwdriver and take that one off. Doesn't really matter if we damage it any further. split quite easily so with this one you've got kind of two options you can take it off forward or take it off on the rear um, I'm probably going to go back with it is that the better way let's see so same thing we're just gonna go underneath that So we're going forward, <laughs> seems a bit easier. Just got to get it over this bit. And then finally, over this end. There we go. So that's your seals removed. Yeah, so what we have is two different size seals. Um, if we look at the old ones, you can see that the internal holes are different sizes, even though this one split very easily when we removed it. So we've got a uh, the size is HBSP 108, and the other one's HBSP 109. I'm trying to see which one's the bigger one, but we'll just get them out of the packet and show you. So this is the 109. It actually is listed for the mini race moto as well but the uh, there's a document online you can check on the hope website it gives you all the part numbers so that's that and then this one is the 108 which also is listed for the mini and the moto the race it doesn't say tech free on the bag but is a tech free so there's your new ones and there's your old one there and the old one that's split so they're all the same that's like your old one, quite easy to move, quite squidgy. And then your new one's definitely got a bit more kind of give to it, which makes it a lot harder to put back on. So we're going to get rid of those two anyway. And then sort this one out. So where's our piston? There we go. Yes, yeah, so what we've got here is our piston, and we've got our two new seals. I'm just going to show you quick, put this spring on. So what it is, is the 
pistons are tapered. So essentially this end with the gap in the middle rather than the one that doesn't have the gap that will face the piston so it sits that way. So if we put that on there like that without blocking all the light it would get that nice and straight. It would sit on there like that. So yeah, let's try and do that now. <clears throat> we'll start with a smaller piston, a uh, smaller sill, which would go on the end, on this end, because this has got the smaller diameter on the actual bit of metal there. And what you're going to try and do is get that over that end. Easier said than done. So what I tend to do is push that onto there like that, try and hold that with my thumb. So we've wedged that against the side, and then we're going to put this through the middle of the seal and we're going to try and lever that over and once you kind of do it a few times the piston does stretch a little bit, uh, the seal does stretch a little bit, sorry. see that it's like you really got to stretch it at the same time got my finger stuck there we go so that's your little one sorted and then we're gonna do this this one's gonna go over here like so you might just find that it pops on straight away and then once you get it down to the little ridge you have to slide it over So we just put that on there like so, and then you can push it down to the ridge. And then what you've got to do is get underneath it and just lever it over that little ridge. And then once you've got one little bit, if you can just try and go around the edge and just push that in. And there you go, and just make sure that it looks nicely seated and there's no like bibbly bobbly bits. And if you want, just hold. Why are you focusing on the stupid camera? Come on. If you want, you just hold the seal in place and turn the piston, and it should just slide inside the seal. And then if you've got any kind of little lumps and bumps, it should be alright to just get rid of them that way. So yeah, there, there is that. It's a bit of a bugger to do. Yeah, so what we are going to do now is just put the pistons back in. I've just put them in like that. So we've still got everything connected. And obviously you can just line up the holes. And just pop that into there, like so. Just wiggle it a little bit. So we're going to grab the tool to do up the little T10 torques and at the same time just push down on that piston. And there we go. Have a little look around the edge, make sure it's not sticking out. There's no like um, recess on this one. So if you look at the hole there's no like edge where that rubber has to sit into. So it's just going to sit around, so it might stick up a little bit on the edges. But it's nice and flush, make sure your piston's moving. So that's all good. Same for this side. And I'd probably guess that these are the new pistons, uh, the new seals, because that goes in a lot easier. So you might find, if you've got new seals on something, the lever feels a bit smoother. Same thing, just press down on the, on the piston. Tighten that. And there's your two pistons there. Yes, yeah, so originally what I wanted to do was see if um, everything was kind of symmetrical. So the master cylinder body, this part is, so you can run that left or right. But this actual long lever 
you have to buy a different one for left and right. Because if we wanted to flip that over to the right hand side and then run this normal tech free lever, it's going to interfere with that. It's going to end up hitting it. These are right. These are okay. Like the tech free levers, you can flip them over and use them on each side. Obviously, it's just a straight lever blade, but with this kind of design, you need left and right specific ones. So, yeah, we're just going to use it as a left brake. Um, what I'm going to do is try and thread an Allen key through here so that we can try and line up all these holes. It's quite difficult because it's spring loaded and then you've got the force of the piston as well pushing against you. Just make sure that's out of the way. that through there and that means hopefully we can push the pivot and just follow the allen key through and it might help align some of the stuff up a little bit easier there we go we don't want to go that far though I'm just going to pull that out halfway and then we can run the other lever thing or just one part of it for now seems like I've got both bits so yeah, we're just gonna try and wiggle that through and always find if you kind of bend the lever fully it seems to help push the pivot through so where's our little circlip this thing that we've got to put on the end if you do find that it's kind of overstretched you could just get it in a set of pliers and just try and tweak it a little bit just going to put that in there like that, give it a little squeeze. Grab a little circlip pliers as well. And we're just going to open them up enough just to slide it over the top. There we go. Make sure it's clicked into place. There we go, and then that should freely spin around and move. Um, obviously if you do change left to right you might need to change your hoses over which is pretty straightforward it's just eight millimeters um, on here eight mil spanner and then you'll need like a new copper washer on each one when you reattach the lever to seal it but yeah that's basically it and then check your rubber diaphragm make sure there's no holes or anything in it one of these on each end and then your cap and then tighten your screws up And then on the other side, just do the same, and that should be your Hope uh, Duo lever sorted. Shame about the kind of system where it's not a symmetrical lever, but yeah, hopefully that'll be of use to some people who might have this lever. <laughs> 